If you believe the polls, Senate Bill 5 is in big trouble. As Election Day approaches, the no on two side is pulling farther ahead. The latest Quinnipiac University poll shows the gap at 25 percentage points. 33 percent of registered voters support keeping the limits on collective bargaining. 56 percent want to repeal it. The gap has nearly doubled in the last month. Union members and Democrats have been campaigning against those term limits those coll on collective bargaining for public workers since February, and they have been raising money since February. So far, they've collected $31 million, about four times the $8 million the yes on two side has raised. Kathy Kandiski, first to the polls, why do you think that gap has widened so much? Well, I think it's a lot of things. I think the money, as you mentioned, they're, they've got a distinct cash advantage, those on the, on the um, opponent side of this. I think they've had some pretty effective advertising. Um, you've seen lots of commercials with firefighters, police forces, teachers, um, people that most Ohioans, you know, hold up. Um, and they're showing that this is going to hurt them. I mean, that's what the ads are showing. I think also you've got some momentum going with early voting. Um, I spent some time at the Franklin County Board of Elections this week, and everyone, everyone, I mean, everyone I spoke to there was there to come to vote against issue two. So I think they've got a lot of good, good momentum behind them. And I think there's a backlash against the governor, too. I mean, this is seen as his initiative. He's had a bad couple of weeks. And if you look at some of the comments from even Republican local elected officials, they are really irritated that he cut the local government fund, that he cut $3 billion for public education. And now they're being forced to make deep cuts locally or else ask people to raise their taxes. They don't like it. And he also told them, don't raise local taxes. Do it without. And he says this is a tool, but... Everybody knows whatever kind of tools you may be manifested in this way will be years down the road. Bob, what's the what's the hope for the yes on two side? What do they they hope? Obviously, the polls are wrong. And it's yeah, not that and, and I think w one thing we need to talk about when we're discussing this is the whole polling of state issues is so problematic um, because you never in, in an off year like this you never quite know what your turnout's going to be. And the other side may be motivated enough that they're able to get their people out more so than the yes side is. But I think you really can't tell what that mix is going to be for turnout. And also, you can't tell. It depends on how how they ask the questions. And this is one of those issues that, depending on the way you ask the question, you kind of get different you know, answers and people understand it differently. So I think we got to be a little careful at what we're looking at here. But at Quinnipiac, they did ask the question two different ways. Do you support this issue and then do you support the limits on collective bargaining? And then the results are but pretty much the same. But neither one of those is exactly what the people see when yeah. they go in on Election Day and vote or if they vote early, they see in their absentee ballot. So I mean, it's, it, you really can't tell yet where, where we're at. In fact, I think both sides are worried about the polling because the, those who are opposed to issue two don't want you know, their, their folks to kind of let, let back, think they don't need to worry about this, maybe they don't need to vote. And I think you're seeing the same on the proponent side where they're trying to get the message out to their forces that, hey, this, this isn't a done deal yet. The, the polling may not be as close as, as it really is. This, the gap doubled at the time that the negative ad involving the grandmother came out. There were other ads that basically, if not blamed public workers for the recession, said that the public workers were responsible for continuing the recession. Did those ads overreach, Bob? Well, I think the problem is whenever you're, the process gets in, gets the headlines versus your message, you, it's not good. And I think it's the sheer volume of ads on the on the no side. I mean, they, they're spending a lot more money, and you can't watch a newscast without seeing, you know, three or four of their ads compared to one on the yes side. So I think it's just the money and the sheer volume of their ads that's, that's pushing it. But, but I think the grandmother ad really backfired. And anecdotally, what I'm hearing from people who don't follow this nearly as closely as we do, that they thought that was really mean and they thought it was a cheap shot. And that grandma, she's the real deal. I mean, I spent a half a day with her, and she's mad. And uh, she, his, she feels very emotional about it. Firefighter saved her granddaughter. It also smacks a little bit, going to what you're saying, of desperation. Mm -hmm. So if it seems desperate like when you're doing something like that, then it's sending yeah. a signal to your supporters that we're in you trouble. Know, I've said all along that the problem with the proponent side on this is that they've tried to demonize firefighters, police officers, yeah. teachers, public workers. And I just don't think the average citizen thinks those folks are that bad. No. Now the, and I think that's been a problem that they've had to overcome in the ads. The fundraising numbers came out this week. 
They've raised a total of about $31 million. Most of that money, Sandy, is coming from unions. Could that possibly backfire in that, okay, the middle-of-the-road voter says, okay, this is really being, the unions are just trying to save their own hides. See, like Kathy said, they want you to say unions are bad. Well, mm -hmm. unions are the people who put out the fires and patrol your streets and clean your schools and teach your kids. And I think people recognize them. The other problem is this election was supposed to be about jobs. We've had four months of unemployment numbers since John Kasich's budget took effect, and unemployment went up three months, three of the four months. And a lot of those job losses were civil servants. Well, this, where, where are the jobs? Let's, let's not forget, though, that the unions are, this is life and death for them. They, this, they want their union dues. That's what this gets down to is union dues, so that they can continue to make co campaign contributions to public officials who then they collectively bargain with. So it's a system that's gaming against taxpayers because it's the unions who bargain, but they've given the money to the mayors, the city councilmen, those people that they collectively bargain with. So what's the fairness here? And the taxpayer doesn't have a voice in that. Look at the salaries. There are, there are custodians in school districts across the state who haven't had a raise for eight years, and they're making $24,000 a year. They're not and there's also the teachers who work nine months out of the year that are making over 100000 a year. And sure, they've done, it, they've done it for 20, 30 years, but the average taxpayer isn't doing that, and they're paying that $100,000 salary. And we have part-time legislators who make a minimum of sixty thousand dollars a year and when they were asked to share in the sacrifice they said we earn our money well you know what i think the cops and the firefighters think they earn their everybody money earns their money except for the union official that gets paid three or four hundred thousand a year so that he can organize his uh... people to give campaign contributions the, uh, the one thing that's I'm going into the union business <laughs> yeah <laughs> you can make a lot of money doing that uh... one of the things is this issue, too, has been called as a referendum on John Case. And if you look at the approval rating of the governor, which came out this week in the Quinnipiac poll, he has gone back a bit. He was up to 40 percent. Now he's slipped back down to 36 percent, 52 percent disapprove. He hasn't really... This was done before the yeah. wild animal situation. Yeah, and so this but, is but the, th the thing is, that. anytime you have to close an $8 billion deficit you're going to have people that are not happy. And this is what he had to do. He knew going into this that he was going to have to close $8 billion because the previous governor didn't want to do it and just kept spending money and took us in debt, which obviously by our state constitution, we can't be in debt. Well, he argues the economy took us into debt. Uh, well, in his spending, took us into debt. So the, Governor Kasich knew he was going to come in. He was going to have to close that gap. Now, the problem, I mean, the, the good thing for him is he doesn't have to worry about it right now because he's not up for another three years. So he's got plenty of time to bring that back. But that's why he's at where he's at right now. He closed it, and he did it without raising taxes. But if you're talking about the tie between his approval ratings and issue two, everyone identifies issue two with the governor. There's no question. So I, I think his approval ratings, while they may bounce back between now and the election, right now it's are going to have some impact on the yeah. issue two vote. No question. And I also think that people can draw a very straight line from the fact that he says he did it without raising taxes, and when they look on their local ballots, they're being asked to raise taxes all over the place at the local level. And right. I think people know where that's coming from.